I don't want to over uh, talk over anyone else. So I'm just going to throw it straight to Mick while we're still talking. Come on, Mick, take, take the front seat. Well, uh, during uh, the CSA rally in June that uh, Katie was at, uh, I was introduced to Julian by, by Katie and uh, I was speaking at that rally. Well, after speaking, I was with by Joe and a few people that, uh, from the Nottingham area. And the overall the conversation between Joe and myself uh, to uh, continue the fight against uh, child sex abuse that was being covered up in Nottingham. Now, what we had planned was to move and occupy the council house and the article 61 of the Magna Carta. Now, he's with himself saying he's got all these followers. Now, was it with Katie and uh, a few other people? Um, I actually thought it was credible, but there was only in a circle of us that knew of what we were going to do here, here in Nottingham. Now, I told him, I told him well, I need to speak to my people, and uh, I'll bring it back to him. Well, he was phoning me seven or eight times a day, which is something that he does with all these vulnerable women. And just to bring me in, hot line and sinker. And he brought with me, because uh, I got pissed off listening to his calls. But in the end, he told me he got at least 200 people that would come and occupy the council house with me. So I'll give them a date after, after discussing with, with Mark Sloan and Joe and a few others. And now, Bill, what do I get? I get an injunction from the council. Well, the day before, wasn't it? And, and it was about two, two or three days before we were going to go and occupy the council, uh, the council house. Yeah. Now, that banned me from going to every council building in Nottingham. Now, the only way you could have known, or the only way any of the council could have known, we are such a tight knit group, we know that it had to have been him. Uh, but I, now you've said that, I want to I want to just ask Katie, Katie, if you're over there, um, Mickey just said about the ringing, constantly, constantly, ringing, ringing, ringing. What have you got to say about that yourself, though? Well, it could, it could start from, um, I, I would agree with it, because I... I felt rude if I didn't answer um, and it could start from seven o'clock in the morning and even if I logged into Facebook he would see my availability or my Skype I noticed then that he had ways of checking to see if I was available on my phone um, even for example when I tried to get away from just having any contact with him on the 18th of um, September because he had um, been trying to tell me I've got to trust him I've got to trust him at this point is where I ended up finding a medical terminology or um, a psychological terminology word that I could tell him as to why I didn't trust him and that's the, when I came up with the word pistanthophobia um, and then in, in a way to insult that he then put on his Facebook as though it was something that he found and then wrote <coughs> and then wrote word of the week pistanthophobia but I got annoyed with him because he had been pestering me pestering me for two hours um, whilst I was out on my fishing trip with my son and my friend that day. Um, so then that made me say, do you know what, sorry, I'm going to go out and I'm going to go camping for the night. And then he continued to troll on my Facebook. Um, and then because he wasn't getting the response from me that he wanted, uh, then the next day he then decided, because the week before, um, it was actually in September on the 12th, I think it was, Mickey, was the United We Stand Against Child Abuse, not in the June. Um, that week before, because I took my sister, he made sure that we took her straight back to where, exactly where she was. So he managed to obtain her address. So then the next week, because he wasn't getting a response from me, he turned up at my sister's house to get the recording that my sister's got. Uh, my sister took of me confronting Jeremy Corbyn that day about 788 Finchley Road um, because John Patterson couldn't make it down. So he asked me to do it instead. And then that's where I felt the conflict happened with John Patterson. But... Um, what I'm saying is, is on that trip of the tent, like going out camping, is I returned and I even put it up on my status that 14 missed calls I had and all these texts like trying to contact me. Um, and also, on, as I said, on the 19th of September, when he's turned up at my sister's, I've got concerned. Why is he in the area? I then had to go home and charge my phone so that I've got batteries so that I can contact between the two so that he used that as a way of making contact with me. So couldn't go away it didn't matter if I wanted to go away for the weekend when I asked him on the Sunday um why there's so many missed calls and what was going oh I was trying to get hold of you because I wanted to come camping with you and to me that that's like get the hint that's, 
fucking weird, man. It's too much. And that that's where I had, I, I started to become very, very <laughs> concerned of the, his neediness upon me. Um, the conversations, like, that wasn't what it was like from the June to the August. And then all, <clears throat> all of a sudden, pardon me, all of a sudden there was this, all of a sudden neediness um, that was coming on. And that's what I'm saying. It was all the way through the constant phone calls. I was neglecting my son at the time. I was neglecting things that I needed to do in my home. I was neglecting what I needed to do because to him, I needed to listen to what he had to say and God's gifts and speak about them. 